Welcome to Pharmacy Accounting Basics. My name is Joey Mattingly and today we're going to be talking about the balance sheet. For today's objectives, we're going to define assets, liabilities, and equity and explain their relationship. We'll be able to identify common assets and liabilities for a pharmacy business and then explain the difference between accrual basis and cash basis accounting. So first, what is an asset? So according to the Financial Accounting Standards Board, assets are probable future economic benefits obtained or controlled by a particular entity as a result of past transactions. So what does that mean in your own words? Probable future economic benefits, so they're not guaranteed, but we think we'll get them right, so they're probable or likely, and we obtain those benefits, or maybe we control those benefits, as a result of something that we did, right? So, you know, you run a business, you provide a service, and you're paid for that service. And how are you paid? Are you paid in cash? Are you paid um, with an IOU? Are you paid by a credit card so that cash is coming later? Are you paid um, with inventory? You know, are we bartering? Are we are we swapping products? So, so how how are you uh, how are you uh, gaining financially? So what is a liability? So as you can imagine, a liability is a probable future sacrifice of economic benefits that arise from present obligations as a result of past transactions. So that means, in your own words, you might say, so these are what, you know, times when we're actually going to have to give up some of those economic benefits, so some of that cash that we may have in the future. And so, again, probable future sacrifices, so we assume we're going to have to pay this off. So, and again, you know, thinking about situations where you may not have to pay off that liability, maybe uh, where, you know, the debt's forgiven, the debt's written down, some other type of circumstances. So, uh, but probable, so we expect that we're going to have to sacrifice future uh, economic benefits, right? So then what is equity? Now, the FASB defines it as the residual interest in the assets of an entity that remain after deducting its liabilities. So that sounds like a formal definition, but how do you really say that, right? So assets minus your liabilities equal your equity might be an easy way to explain it. This is a common way that's uh, used in the, in the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, one of my favorite books, um, in the way he, he describes it. But when you see an official balance sheet that's like uh, produced by a business, you're going to see it written the other way. You're going to put liabilities on the side with equity so, of the equation. So you're going to see assets equal to liabilities plus equity. So I think the, you know, however you look at it, and again, I, I like to sometimes teach that assets minus liabilities equal e equity just because that's how we often think about it for our own personal lives, right? We think we own something that's an asset. Maybe we owe something um, that we, you know, took out a loan to get that asset, and whatever's left is sort of the equity that we have in that, you know, in that exchange. But when you're running a business, uh, the, you know, one of the ways you can always tell if a if a balance sheet has been done correctly or incorrectly is whether or not the liabilities and the equity add up to equal the total assets. So that's sort of a quick check. One of my favorite practice examples is assuming that we want to buy a house. Maybe it's a house that costs $200,000. We've saved up $40,000 cash and we plan to use all of it as a down payment. And then we're gonna take the rest out as a loan. In addition to the loan, we're gonna to have to spend about 10% of the total cost of the house in transaction costs. So this might be like your inspections, bank fees, and whatever. So what does your balance sheet equation look like before and after you buy the house? I think it's really important that students go through this, go through that exercise. So jot it down, see what you come up with, and uh, feel free to put in in the comments below or uh, you know what what you think. I think it's really important that all students go through this process before ever buying a house. Just write out that balance sheet equation, understand what's going in on both sides of the equation before and after your transaction, and just understanding what's changing so that. You know, you don't sort of buy into some of those other things that people try to tell you about, oh, you know, the benefits or the cost of buying a house. Just do the math and, and understand the, the risk and the components that you're taking on. 
So what are some typical assets and liabilities that we think about with pharmacy, and spe uh, pharmacy specifically? So the most common ones uh, in terms of assets are going to be cash, of course, is first. So any type of cash that exchanges hands. You'll then see a, a major uh, component of assets that are called accounts receivable. So this was often like you've... Um, you know, you've exchanged a product, so you've sold a prescription, and maybe the uh, customer used a credit card. Well, with the credit card, you don't actually have cash that you're getting, but you're getting sort of a, a promise that a credit card company, you know, as a mediator through the patient, is going to pay you cash in the future. So, like, you're, you'll run the, you know, you swipe the card, and, and that's sort of kind of going in your account. And again, with the way credit cards are these days, it almost does feel like cash, but technically you could kind of call that an accounts receivable. Inventory is the next big one for pharmacy, for sure. Uh, ph pharmaceuticals can be quite expensive, and so they often take up a large uh, component of the of the pharmacy asset. So a pharmacy may have three, four, five hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory just in the cost of the drugs alone. That that you know wouldn't necessarily go bad until they expire or are damaged. And then pharmacies often often have the property or equipment maybe for the pharmacy so the furniture in the building um, any machines or devices that are purchased that that are of that have any value left in them a lot of times you'll see on a balance sheet something like property plant and equipment what are some example liabilities that we have so obviously we have employees so when we when our employees work we we are going to owe them wages and we don't typically pay them every single day often we'll pay you know so it's not like we um, you know, not like we just pull cash out of the register to pay the employees. A lot of times they'll we'll set it up and they'll they'll receive a paycheck every two weeks or maybe every month. And so, really, what's happening uh, over time? You know, you're going to have employees that have worked a shift and that we owe them uh, pay for that shift. So, so that might be you know you could categorize that as a wages uh, wage payable. Other expenses payable. A lot of times we think of our expenses on a monthly basis some you know sometimes you may have other expenses that are you know more you know you have longer than a month to pay off but we have a lot of expenses that we think of on a monthly basis and then we may have some short-term debt so maybe a a loan that we've taken out that's only a three six nine you know less maybe less than a year um, term on it so it's like some short-term debt like credit card or whatever we may have and then there's longer term debts maybe we bought our building and we put the building on a 15 or 20, 30 year, year year loan loan term. So we have a long, maybe a longer term debt for that. Now here's an example of Walgreens and their 10K. So 10K is a form they fill out annually, and this is their sort of major tax form. And you can scroll down, uh, and it's usually a 100, 150 page document. And so I just scrolled down and, and took a snapshot of their current balance sheet into that was reported in August 2019. And they often report multiple years. That's why you see August uh, 19 and 18 side by side. So we've got our assets, right? And so you see the 67,000, you know, 598. Well, you know, they didn't just make $67,000. Uh, if you can tell up at the top that it's actually recorded in U.S. dollars uh, in millions. So we're talking, uh, you know, 67,000 millions. So so I mean, we're looking at uh, 67 billion dollars, right? In addition to their assets, then we've got all these liabilities through here. So they got short-term debt, and they they break it out into current and non-current liabilities, so some longer-term liabilities. And then at the bottom, you see all their stocks and sort of comes out to their equity and look down at the bottom, so uh, compare the asset number. So let's look at August 2019 with uh, 67 billion dollars. Uh, yeah, 67 billion for total assets. Look down at the bottom, 67 billion uh, in total liabilities and equity. So these should add up. So again, you know, playing through some examples, like if you were to, you know, create an, uh, a balance sheet for your pharmacy, maybe you had cash, and again, accounts receivable, things that maybe are owed to you. You know, you've dispensed prescriptions and and you know collected co-payments and then insurance cards you've run and you've know, submitted the bill to the insurance but you're not going to receive the insurance money for a month or two so you you know maybe account for that uh, in an accounts receivable account maybe you've got two hundred thousand dollars at the at that date uh, on in in uh, on hand in inventory and so those those are the things we 
typically think of as our current assets for a pharmacy and other larger items like our property, again, that PP&E, property plant and equipment, uh, those are like longer term assets, right? So maybe combined, we have a total of a million dollars in assets. And then on the liability side, so we kind of break things out. Maybe we've got different accounts that we have to pay. So, you know, those wages, expenses, whatever. Maybe we've got some short-term debt and some long-term debt for buying the building. And, you know, we add up all of our liabilities and say our liabilities equal about $500,000. Well, if our assets equal a million and our liabilities are at 500000 then our retained earnings or our total equity that we have as an owner would be about $500,000. So, you know, again, if we were to say, well, what is your net worth, you know, in this situation, you wouldn't say that your net worth is a million. Your net worth would be the, the your your equity component, so uh, 500000 So your total liabilities and equity uh, are at a million, so should should equal out. A couple more questions for you to consider. So what is goodwill? So what is something when we, when we hear the term goodwill when we talk about accounting? I think that's something that would be good for, for you to maybe look up on your own. And, and again, maybe another uh, good question is what's an example of an intangible asset? You know, what are some other, uh, so I guess I kind of gave you the answer for goodwill, thinking of it as an intangible asset. But what's another example of an intangible asset? And think about, think about something you might see in healthcare and pharmacy. What happens to receivables? So think of the accounts receivables. Whatever happens to receivables that are never actually received? What do we, what do, we do with those? So, you know, I'll leave a couple of those questions out there for you to think about. And, uh, you know, as we as we go through the module, hopefully, um, you know, you'll whether that's looking up on your own quick Google search, uh, you know, I'm trying to think like how you might get to those answers. But, you know, think think on your own, maybe talk amongst your friends. You know, what what are some good answers there? And and we'll try to bring this up during class. All right, one last thing that's important for the accounting uh, component or the way we think about balance sheets is the accounting period. And this is that when we talk about the period, we're talking about how, you know, what is that balance sheet representing? And so the typical accounting period is in a is in a one year time period. So like we'll think from you know January to December or fiscal uh, year. And so when we when we're building out our balance sheets, it, it's it's representing the end of that period so like december 31st we say okay on december 31st this is what we have right and when we think about the period that we're in so say we did january to december when we are there's different ways you can set up your balance sheet you can record everything on an accrual basis which is what most large organizations do uh, you can also do things on a cash basis cash basis is a little bit simpler but it's uh, easy to you know, to, to kind of get confused or, or for things to kind of look um, look unbalanced or, 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 you know, can really throw you off if, if you're not, you know, if you're not sure what's happening in the period. And the main difference when you think about it is that accrual basis is when you write down your revenue and expenses in the period in which they're earned, regardless of whether or not you got money or not, right? So this is where, you know, you sell a prescription in December, um, the money that you sold, so say you sold the prescription for $100 and uh, the patient gave you a $10 copay, and so that means $90 is coming from the insurance. Well, that $90 may not get to your pharmacy till January or February, but for your tax purposes, if you're doing a cruel basis accounting, you would say that you earned that $90 in December, Right. You wouldn't say that you earned it and when you get it. You would say you earned it when you did the work. That way it allows you to match up the revenues and expenses where, you know, where they actually, uh, where the transactions took place. With cash basis, and this is typically more small business uh, just because it's, you know, a lot of times it's cheaper from an accounting perspective to do a cash basis accounting. And this is just tracking what you get. And this is, you know, so you record things as you get it, right? So so if the money doesn't get to you, you don't write it down. So so that means you wrote down, you got 10 bucks in January in, or in December for that co-payment. And then the $90 you put on the following year. So, you know, you can kind of see where uh, that might be easier uh, if you're running a small business. But when it, when it gets larger, that could really kind of throw you off because it might, might put you in one period. Um, say you had a, you know, really big December, but a lot of the, a lot of the work that you did and that you pay, you know, that you want to get credit for that work that you did, you actually don't receive the money until the following year. Well, you may pay 
you know, you may pay less in taxes uh, in that previous year and there's more in taxes the following year when the money actually comes in. So, you know, I, I guess really the main thing is that you have to be consistent. It's a major uh, issue if you switch from accrual to cash basis um, in the middle of the year or something like that. That's probably a bigger issue than just however you do it. You just need to do, be, be consistently, uh, be consistent through it. But what we're, we'll talk about the most in this class is accrual basis accounting. And so let's like do a quick example. Let's say you're a pharmacy and you dispensed 100 prescription, uh, 100 prescriptions in your first month of business, and there was a sales price of $10,000 total, and 100%. So all $10,000 went on insurance. In month two, the pharmacy dispenses a few more prescriptions, so maybe 150 prescriptions. This time the sales price is $15,000, and again all of it is on insurance. But guess what? In that month, you know you actually say all the insurance. Uh, fees that you billed for in the first month, they all come in the mail. So that means you actually received all your money uh, in month two from month one. And then month three, you uh, receive all those, all the $15,000 that you billed for in month two, you get all of those from insurance, uh, and and then you close your doors. You don't even fill, you know, day one of month three, you don't even fill another prescription, right? So you only fill prescriptions in month one and month two. So follow through this example and let's think how we would write this down on our balance sheet if we're looking at our assets only. So in month one, we filled all those prescriptions and we billed them to the insurance. And since the patients and the, I said 100% were to the insurance, so nothing was a copayment. So we received zero cash. So then we would just write down our, in our account, you know, our, our assets, we would say that we have no cash and that we have $10,000 in accounts receivable for a total assets of $10,000. Right, but you know, it's accounts receivable. So when you're thinking about, oh, I got 10,000 bucks, do you, you know, can you, uh, you can't like spend the $10,000 unless you were to, you know, then go maybe get a credit card or spend, you know, so again, that thinking about like, it's not actual cash that you have. It's like an IOU or something, right? So month two, you actually did get the $10,000 cash and then you've built another $15,000 in insurance and your total assets are now $25,000. And then in month three, everything kind of settles up, right? You didn't bill any more insurance and you received all those other things. And so your total assets were $25,000. Again, this does not look at liabilities. So obviously your total uh, assets would likely be much lower, right? Like, so you probably would burn up some of that cash as you pay off, pay your employees or whatever. But let's focusing just on the assets. This is what it means to do like the accrual accounting. So you put uh, money in, in buckets based on when you did the work, not, not necessarily when you actually got the cash. All right, so that's it for this first section on the balance sheet. If you have any questions, be sure to shoot me an email or uh, any public comments you want to uh, engage on Twitter, I'm happy to do so. Or you can also leave a comment down below. Thank you.